Hi everyone, welcome to Cold Reads, presented to you by Resonant Moon Audiobook Solutions. I am Laura Nicole, the host of Cold Reads. Thank you for joining me. Um, so today we are going to be finishing up Chapter 6, and I have invited uh, two friends from completely different sides of my life um, to come and help voice this part of the adventure. Uh, first, I have uh, playing the part of Eric Moonrunner, um, Tim the Jester Gillick. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, good. Um, so, Tim, tell everybody who's watching or who will watch this uh, who you are and uh, what you do. Uh, well, you can hear my dog Jake in the background there as he hears some phantom noise. <laughs> uh huh. Um, I currently work as, um, well, the official title is IT analyst, but 99% of my job is copy paste. Mm -hmm. My wife gets upset that I get paid twice as much as her to just copy paste when she has to do all the real work. Um, <laughs> but it, technically it's supposed to be web design and content management for Caterpillar. Mm -hmm. um, in my spare time, I do voice acting. I do photography. I write comics. I write a lot. I write and read a lot. And, Currently, that is on the back burner as I'm going to school for a BS in IT. Congratulations. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. And I think we've known each other for almost 10 years now. It's got to be. It's about 10 years because uh, were you in X-Men Days of Future Past? I was. I was Jubilee. Okay. That was 12 years ago. Oh, my goodness. It's been that long? Mm -hmm. And then I did Jonah Hex for you guys way back when. Yeah, that's still, like, missing pieces for parts two and three. Yep. So, yeah, all kinds of stuff. But, um, yeah, Circus 13 Productions was probably one of the biggest uh, breakthroughs for me as a voice actor. So if you get a chance, you guys should check out the show notes after the show and, uh, and check it out. Now, Stacy, I know from my very recent uh, encounters with um, Valley Free Radio. So Stacy, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Hi, I am obviously Stacy. Um, I work in a registrar's office at a local college. Uh, that is mostly pretty boring work, but what I have as a passion project is that I have a radio show on Valley Free Radio, obviously, um, where I talk about science and skepticism, and I also am an avid photographer. So those are the things I actually like to talk about rather than what I actually do for a living. Awesome. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and that's how we met. We met through Valley Free Radio, which is really fun. And uh, y'all should check it out, especially if you live in the Pioneer Valley, like we do. Um, okay, so we are going to be finishing up um, Chapter 6 of, um, of Stonebriar Case Files today. Um, so as I said, Tim, you're going to be playing... Uh, the part of Eric Moonrunner. Um, most elves in this world are very haughty. Um, they have a very lyrical tone to their voice. Um, Eric is a little more down to earth, and that's why he and Beatrix Stonebriar, um, who is his fairy companion, um, that's why they get along so well. Um, he's the smooth talker. Like, if you're thinking of their group of companions as the A-team, he's face. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of like a, maybe like an adult Peter Pan. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Now, Stacy, um, you are going to be playing a character called Lady Tome. And she is an elven archivist, and she is very passionate about, um, about her work, and the fact that somebody could have misused her beloved uh, tomes and everything is inconceivable. And the, uh, I think you're going to get the, um, uh, the feel for her as we, um, uh, as we introduce her. Any questions? Sounds good. 
All right. So without further ado, let me go ahead and share this document. Share to everyone. All right, and here we go with part two, chapter six, part two. What do you think? And it starts with you. Oh, you want me to start? Yes, please. <laughs> uh, what do you think in tricks? Eric asked, well out of earshot of the elder elf. I didn't like what I had thought. I hope I'm wrong, but all the clues point to this outsider elf. She may have a human accomplice as well. This question is, the question is, why would they do this? And who are the central elves? I've never heard of them. The central elves are a nomadic sect that left our group years ago. They have often been at odds with the northern tribes about the types of magic used and how they interact with humans. There could be a number of reasons why. Revenge or trying to start a war are the two most likely reasons. Beg your pardon, folks. One moment. Who's to say it is the other way around, though? What if the human is using the elf? Obviously, the same reasoning could apply. I just don't want to think that one of the magics, no matter what their faction is, could do something so... My words failed me. There was an adjective that really described... There wasn't an adjective that really described the vicious nature of the acts that had been committed. Not once, but seven times. Or the two are unrelated. He responded. But we have both a human and, elf and an elven hair. Clearly they are together. Or they could be two separate instances. There are elves that tend to the wild fairy grounds, you know. Actually, I said, thinking about his statement, no, I didn't remember about that. I internally berated myself for forgetting. How long ago did that start happening? Eric thought for a moment. I think uh, two or three years back, after the wild pixies wandered in the human world and started running amok because they had no clue what was going on. They kept getting caught and being used for experiments. I grimaced. I remember that part. I was the one that brought down one of those laboratories in my region. Well, since then, some of the elves took to the edge of the wood once a week during the summer and fall to check on them and to guide the ones that had woken up to the fairy borders. I nodded and considered the changes. That's a good way to do it, I suppose. You would take care of their own, but who am I to judge? Hey, at least we're doing something. I know you are. Listen, I will go check in on the east side and you can check on the west side to see if anyone has noticed a newcomer. All right, let's see if I can do this. Later that afternoon, Eric and I met up near the southern edge of the silver bark. Any luck? He called to me as, I, as he trotted up. I was sitting on the edge of some tree fungus. My head sank lower into my hands. No, some mentioned it as someone new, but they had no idea who she was staying with or who she was. Same here. Though the librarian... Bye. Though the librarian did mention that her section on runes was left in a bit of chaos when the girl left, and she was not happy about it. I got up from my perch and started heading back the way Eric had come from. When he didn't follow, I explained my plan. If no one else knows who she is or what she's doing here, then what she'd be doing is retracing the places that she's been. He caught up with me in just a couple of strides. You know, I knew there was a reason you were good at the investigation business. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't let it go to my head. 
When we walked into the Hall of Records, the elf girl at the desk blushed and smiled at Eric. She was young and naive. I supposed his charms to get into the library without an appointment. Back so soon, Mr. Moonrunner? Then he turned on the charm. Yes, my friend Beatrix Stonebriar was looking to talk to the librarian and see if she could help. Is she still... In the room section, just follow the angry muttering and you'll find her. The girl gave Eric a winning smile. It was then that I remembered the second reason that he and I would never have worked out. And flirt. Through the center of the tree, stairs circled, and each landing held a different type of knowledge. We passed through genealogy, history, calligraphy, interspecies affairs. Then we got into the library when the, where the sections contained horticulture, prosthesis, oh, prophecies, <laughs> rooms. Sure enough, there's the smallest one I have seen. Half elf, but I was not about to ask. Elves are touchy about their heritage. She was up on a ladder with an armful holding a satchel of fools. She was up on a ladder with an arm holding a satchel of scrolls, placing each one in their designated place. Damned foreigners, leaving a mess for old Tome to clean up. I cleared my throat. <clears throat> Excuse me, Lady Tome? Hmm? She turned to face us and squinted. Who's that? Moonrunner? Yes, ma'am. Stonebriar? She Eric, <laughs> Eric said. And I'm sorry. Beatrix Stonebriar. <laughs> Sorry about that. Stonebriar. Go ahead, Stacy. Okay. That name is plant-based. You're a fairy, aren't you? Out. Off with you. She said, attempting to shoo us off the landing. I'll not have anyone else come here and disrespect these ancient scrolls. I assure you, Lady Tome. When I heard what had happened here, I came to see if I could help, I said as calmly as I could. Help? The old woman was off her ladder now and took a stance with her hands on her hips. And just how could a tiny little wee bug help me? Where bug help me? There was, there was a great urge to roll my eyes or slug the woman. Werebug was not a term heard in polite conversation. I could feel my light starting to ebb with red when Eric whispered to me, Don't do it, Trix. Just let me handle this one. I closed my eyes started working his magic on the woman. You see, my friend can very easily get to those high openings to put the scrolls away, and many hands make light work. She nodded thoughtfully. Eric continued. We are also led to believe that the girl might still have one of your scrolls. If that is the case, we are trying to find her and we'd be happy to return the scroll to you once we do. Someone has taken a scroll? Tome shouted, her face turned autumn red. We do not know that for certain, but we can help you put away and catalog this mess and find out if she did or not. Yes, let's do. And if someone has taken a scroll, there will be hell to pay. Mark my words. We put the scrolls away carefully. Some of them were older than the wood itself and bore the markings of our ancestors from beyond the veil. I did, but there were certain words I could make out. Change, enlighten, earth, mother. Some of the words could be used interchangeably, which made them difficult to decipher. More scrolls later, and I had finally put the last scroll, put back the last scroll. All the while, the old spiteful woman kept going on about how vile other species were, 
It took all of my control to remain in that room. Two that are missing. One this was bad enough. Librarian shrieked. One was bad enough, but two? Oh, if I ever find that silver haired, central gibberish speaking tart, I will curse her for, a, for as long as her line shall last. Thankfully, Tome left the room after that. Eric and I were able to take a look, take our first look at the catalog to see precisely what was missing. Any clue what they are? You don't know? I rarely paid attention to ancient literature. He shrugged with a useful smile that I missed seeing. I know some. I scanned the parchments. Well, they're invocations of different runes. I made a note of the shapes of the runes in my notepad. Without the scrolls, I wouldn't know what they would do. This one I recognize. I pointed to the symbol that looked like an X with one line connecting the points on the right side and another line connecting the points on the left. It's the symbol for change. Eric quirked an eyebrow at me. How do you know that? It was what Rickson read for me in the bones after the incident. He nodded in recognition. The incident was when I let humans into our world in one photograph. It's getting late. Come on over to my tree and spend the night. We can work on this after we've eaten and gotten some rest. Oh... Eric, I couldn't. I raised my hands in protest. He slipped me up in his hands and placed me on his shoulder. He waited until we had passed out of the Hall of Records before speaking again. It was in a low whisper. I'm not going to let you go wandering about in the wood at night by yourself. These criminals might be out to get you. Well, I... I tried standing up for myself again. To no avail. I know you're perfectly capable of handling yourself and that you've got you've probably got more weapons than I'd care to know about but I'll sleep better if I know you're safe. Torek is out there. And I'm sure he'd want to make sure you aren't killed either. I sighed. I knew I'd been beaten. Ugh, fine. I'll stay. But you're coming with me to the Willow Well when I meet up with Turek. He smiled at his victory. Anything you say, Trix. And that's chapter six. Yay! Did it! I can never tell how it's going to sound because. Um, Sometimes the random my phone the RAM on my phone can't keep up with what everybody else is doing. So I'm really hoping that Google Hangouts makes it pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and if it doesn't, well, buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so yeah, what did you guys think? I thought it was good. Yeah. I just need to stop uh <laughs> stepping on other people's lines. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds more natural. Sometimes it's really hard to to get that natural flow. Um, Tim, coming from an audio drama background, um, what do you think of doing this kind of back and forth live as opposed to um, producing it? Uh, doing it cold is one thing. Uh, it, it, you can get the... You can get the feel for it, um, but you can kind of feel like with me, this is the first time I've read any of this. I mean, at all, the, the character or the story. So it's like, I'm trying to figure out mm -hmm. how to do this character. I mean, you gave me notes at the beginning, but it's like, okay, so I got a slight mental picture. Then I start talking. It's like, no, nah, that doesn't sound right. A couple sentences later, oh my gosh, he sounds completely different. Why is that? Oh, it's still not quite right. So let me try again. So by the end, I think I kind of got a, a handle on him, but it's, it's one of those things of, 
do it a few times and build it up, build it up, and then you'll start to get some idea of how how you want it to sound. Um, but going back and forth, uh, and again, you know, if we were in the same room, it would go a little bit quicker and a little bit smoother and waiting on Hangouts to catch up and our different computers and everything. But <laughs> exactly. It's, it's kind of an interesting feel. Uh, kind of interesting to actually like have someone to like react to as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I really enjoy that part, but you're, you're right. Um, and that's part of what I like about cold reads is that you can figure out the character. Um, and what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks, I'm not going to have the same person play the same character. There are going to be other people playing Eric. There are going to be other people playing uh, Turek we, inter uh, we introduced a couple of chapters ago. So there's, um, it's going to be interesting to see how everybody does that. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so before we go, um, I'd like to give you both an opportunity to, um, tell people where they can find you online and follow your projects. Um, Stacey, why don't we start with you? Sure. Um, the easiest place to find me is the website evidence based errata, which is E R R A T A dot com. And that is where you can find old episodes of my radio show, which is called evidence based. Um, and that's the easiest place to find me. Awesome. Um, and Tim. Um, circus 13 productions.com. That's with the numbers one, three, um you can find like uh our old radio shows that we did uh, like some fan based ones like x-men iron man um spider-man craven's last hunt and i still love that one still i think it's one of my best ones mm -hmm. uh some original stuff that i wrote and uh it's like the photography i do cosplay photography you can find me at photos.circus13productions.com so you can find me all over facebook as well and and twitter Awesome. And we've got all of those links in the show notes. Um, so thank you both for showing up. Thank you to my viewers. Um, if you like what you have seen, uh, please go ahead and click uh, subscribe and you can get the daily updates through the, uh, the dog days of podcasting after first we'll be moving to a biweekly schedule. Um, but I will have new short stories, new people that come in. If you would like to be on the show, you have a voice or you have a story you want to submit, go ahead and email me at uh, Laura Nicole audio at gmail.com. Um, if you want to find out more about Resonant Moon, uh, you can go to resonantmoon.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at L Nicole audio. Um, let's see here. What else? What else? What else? Oh, uh, cold reads is covered under creative commons attribution, non-derivative 4.0 international license, which means that you can download it. You can share it. You can post it on your uh, blog. Just don't edit it and make sure that it links back to my YouTube page. Thank you so much again for watching. Thank you to my amazing guests and we will see you tomorrow on cold reads.